Hello Scratchers, this tutorial series is a very basic guide to the simple MMO extension. It's a powerful Scratch extension to help you make a high quality online game. In the previous episode, I introduced blogs about connecting and sending messages. If you haven't watched it, click on this card. If you have any question about creating games in Scratch or Gandhi IDE, join our Discord server. We have a help channel. You can post your questions. Someone will help you. The link is in the description. In this episode, I will explain all the blocks about players in an online game. You will learn about how to display players on the stage correctly. And now, here we go. In most online games, players interact in real time. To realize this function, we need to do three things. First, upload the player's latest status to the server. Second, get the latest status of other players from the server. Third, display all players correctly. We start with the first. Let's see what can be uploaded to the server. This block is to upload the status of a player. There are six options. The default value of name is the username of the player. X and Y are empty. Scale and direction are zero. Extra data is set in the connection block. The names of these six data values are commonly used parameters in the game. They are just named like this for developers to use them more conveniently. They will not be automatically set to the related values. You can set it to any value. This is a block for you to set X and Y. Position is very useful in most games. When players in an online game change their status, use these two blocks to update information. Here is an example. In this game, players control characters who can move around and change their costumes. Let's find the script which changes the position and direction of a player. Add blocks to update X, Y, and direction. Find a script which changes the costume. Add a block to update the costume number. There is no preset data for costume number, so we can set the extra data. This is how to upload status. Next step, get the status of players in the server room. This block can be used to get the player's data from the server. The input is the session ID of a player. As mentioned in the previous episode, the session ID is a unique ID of a player in the server room. In the drop-down box, there are 10 options. In addition to the session ID, there is a UUID. It is a unique user ID of a player. UUID is related to the account of a player. It will not change. For example, if you disconnect from a server room and connect to it again, your session ID will change, but your UUID will not change. When you want to realize a function like a ban list, UUID would be a better choice, because you can target the user with it. Other options. Name is the username of the player. Connected is used to check whether the player is online. X, Y, scale, direction, and extra data are left for developers to cite. The last option is all data in JSON. You can get JSON formatted data with this option. It includes all data. You can use this block to get a player's data with a particular serial number in the server room. It counts from zero. There are two more blocks to get player's data. Online player count will return how many players are in the server room. This block will return the data of all players in the server room. You can choose from two formats, the default format and the JSON format. The default format includes session IDs, UUIDs, and names of all players. The JSON format includes all data of all players in the room. You can use this block from data utils to fill a list with the data. 
Then use this block to get the data you need from one of items in the list. Now we have some data about players. Let's display them in the correct way. When we want to create a lot of characters, it is easy to think of clones. But in Scratch, it is difficult to distinguish clones. In the simple MMO extension, there is a block to create clone with a session ID. That means you can use the session ID to find a clone created in this way. In Util section, there are three bowling blocks. The first one is used to determine whether it is a clone. The second one is used to determine whether the clone is the player who runs the game. The third one is used to determine whether the clone is the player with a session ID. You can use them in different situations. When clones are created, you can make them look the same as the player in the game. Because clones are created with session ID, you can get the player status from the clone. Use this block. There are 10 options. Let's go back to the example. We just uploaded the position, direction, and costume number. When a player connects to the room, create clones for all players in the room with their session IDs. Then, when the clone is created, set its status. Now, all players in the room are displayed, but they still cannot update status, and there are some special events to be handled. For example, when a new player connects to the server room, a new clone should be created. Let's move to the section Player Event. First event, when a new player connects, you can get the session ID, name, and all data in JSON format. Use the session ID to create a new clone. You can use this block to get all data of a new player. Second event, when a player disconnects, you can delete a clone with their session ID. Use this block to get all data of a player who disconnect. Third event, when a player's status changes, you can update the status of the player's clone with the session ID. Use this block to get all data of the player who changed status. Now, with all these blocks, you can make a functioning online game. I'd like to play your online game, and it would be great if you record a tutorial video to show how you make an online game. Post your links in the comment, and I will pin them. The next episode is the last one in this series. We will learn how to make a matching system. See you soon!